So um, I've been a teacher, <coughs> sorry, I'm losing my voice today of all things. I've been a teacher for 30 years at elementary school, middle school, so I'm nothing special in terms of any great skills or anything like that. But um, go ahead and go to the next one. Um, activism, what can I realistically tell? This is a picture from Whale Wars, and it was a show that um, was on for a while, and I really, really loved it, and I really, really wanted to fight the Japanese whalers because it's just horrible what they're doing, but I am not going to go get on a ship for five months in the freezing cold and fight these whale hogs. I, I did write to them. I, I am friends with Pete Bethu. This is his boat. They got sunk, and I follow them really well and stuff. But as an activist, what it, you know, what is it that you really can do? Next one. So I, come, I love this quote because it says there is simply no polite way to tell people they've dedicated their life to, to <laughs> Whether you're talking Mormon, Scientology, I mean anything, you're trying to tell somebody they're wrong, but not just they're wrong, their entire life and everything they believed in and built on is wrong. Next slide. Um, so this is the uh, meat before milk. This is a quote that is used a lot in the Mormon church. And I met somebody that I really liked, and I was impressed with how important he was to Mormonism, so I started investigating it. I was in my 40s, so it wasn't like I was young and impressionable. But I started going and investigating the Mormon church, and I found a lot of things about it I really, really liked. I really liked how they worked together. I really liked how they helped each other. I really liked a lot of their teachings and stuff. And what they call milk before meat is they give you the love bombing. They give you the, the great things about it. They give you a calling, a job. They make you feel like part of it. And then you start learning stuff about it that seems a little weird, but that's okay because everything else about it is so great. But as you explore more about it and you start to read and, and, and start to have your questions, that's just supposed to be kind of swept under the table. I can't do that. So when I asked questions and started stepping out there and stuff, I was kind of being pushed back under the table. Don't ask that. Don't do that. So I ended up uh, leaving. I'm not doing it. But that's the kind of milk before me. Next one. So um, I started watching Leah Remini's show, um, started a few years ago on a and &E, and it was called The Psychology of the Aftermath. And I just like documentaries, I like this thing. So I started watching it, and I really wasn't paying attention to what it was about. She started out just talking about disconnection and how it separated families and stuff. But about four or five episodes into it, they did an episode that um, covered gold banks in Hemet, California, the secret international banks. And I went, wait a minute. That's just down the street. I drove past that thing every day on my way to work for years. And everybody knows about it, but nobody knows what it is. You know, it's behind walls and, and razor wire and all this stuff. So I started watching these episodes a little more closely because I realized that this is happening right here. So um, I started realizing some of the abuses that they were referring to, people being trapped, this human trafficking, these children being abused in camps and neglected and all this. And I'm like, wait a minute, this is happening right here. I need to check this out. So on Facebook, I saw that there was going to be a women's tea that anyone could go to. It was uh, sponsored by the women's club. So I went to it. Nobody would go with me. My family wouldn't go with me. My friends, they were like, too scared. No, no, we're not that Scientology compound. They'll trap you. you know? <laughs> so I went to the tea, and it is a little scary, but I went to the tea, and I met this nice woman there, and she invited me to a mixer. And so I kind of went home and was like, you know, it's just a nice tea, and I met some people there, and they invited me to this mixer. But I continued to watch Leah Remedy. And on this one episode, this woman was talking about escaping Scientology, and uh, she wrote a book. Skinny Scientology. Now, every time somebody appears on Leah Remini's show or speaks out against Scientology, except for me, it hasn't happened yet, they immediately come out with a hate video. And this whole video, and it's people that have known them or family members still or something, but this hate video comes out of, and some of them have created whole websites about hate the, the person. So I was watching the hate video about Karen Presley and it had her husband, and then it had that woman that I met at the tea party. And I was like, hey, Lady, she invited me to a mixer. Wouldn't it be funny if I took Karen's book and offered it to the lady because she just did this hate video? So the book arrived the day of the mixer in the mailbox, and I went, Oh, that's a sign. So I messaged Karen, I go find her on Facebook, and I messaged her, and I said, Hey, Karen, my name's Karen I'm going to go to this mixer, and I just got your book. And she wrote back, When I am crazy. So I go to this mixer, I'm scared. Nobody will go with me, and it's behind the gates, and they let you in, and all this stuff. I had to, I had to time in and check in with people. They go, I'll check in every 15 minutes so we know you're not trapped and locked up. It's scary. It's really scary. 
So I go and I'm walking around, I don't know what to do, so I just start sending it down and taking pictures. And I go up to the lake and I said, hey, listen, I, I saw your video. I actually said to her, I have a present for you. I'm really thankful for you. And I, she's like, oh, a present for me. And I hand her and she goes, I have a picture of her doing that. And I said, well, I thought you might want to see your book because you talked about her. I don't need this kid. So I walk around a little bit more, and then I see the lady's husband playing the piano. He's a keyboard musician. So I go up to him and I said, hey, you wrote that song, On the Wings of Love. He said, how, how did you know that? I said, I Googled you. He goes, why would you Google me? I said, well, I read about you in this book. <laughs> so he reaches for the book, but he realizes what it is, and, he, and I have a picture of him. <laughs> so needless to say, I was politely tapped on the shoulder and said, would you please leave? So I, I left, you know, and I did, and I walked out. And um, as I was leaving, the lady said to me, you know, why are you here? What are you doing? And I said, well, I like to look at two sides of things. Just like when I investigated the Mormon church, I read things for and against it. So I wanted to see what you were about, just like I'm reading these books. So as I left the compound, I had cars behind me, following me, making sure I left. And I'm thinking, okay, I'm not going to take the route home, so I went to Starbucks. And then I went to Cedar Brothers, and then I went to a gas station, and by then I realized I wasn't being followed anymore, and I went home. <laughs> well, then, I had, so I sent all these pictures to the author, and she said, holy shit, who would believe that a week after my book comes out, my ex-husband is sitting there almost touching it. Like, I wouldn't even think he knew it existed, but we have the proof that he knows it exists. So it kind of became this big deal that I had done this. All right, so I'm going, okay. Well, I started looking into the paperwork that the lady gave me, and they're really into charities. We are going to um, support charities. We have this golf course, and, um, and so, oh, you know, go to the next slide. This is the uh, article that ended up in the bunker, and you can see that here is the musician almost touching the bunker. Almost. <laughs> so, and then this is the article. You have to have a good sense of sneak into the bay. So I didn't sneak in, but I you know, got in and took the book. So that was the first time I had an article written about me. Next slide. But then I started noticing that they were having all these charity events that were happening. And they have a really nice golf course and a really nice clubhouse. So what they do is they offer it for free. So if you want to have a fundraiser, you can come to this place. And for totally free, all the money raised is totally going to you. We are just doing this out of the goodness of our hearts. Skeptic camp. So, <laughs> so I looked and I went, wait a minute. This is CASA, the Center Against Sexual Assault. This is their Riverside County Human Trafficking Division <gasps> holding a fundraiser at the site of human trafficking. <laughs> so I wrote them a letter and they said, uh, hi guys, you know, are you aware that the place that you are holding this is made up by all these Sea Org members who are abused and kept, you know, kept um, working you know, 17 hours a day, seven days a week, they're not fed very well, they're not treated well. So they wrote back, thank you for the concern, but you know, we only use our own people to set up, we don't use any of their employees. So I wrote back, who do you think is maintaining the golf course? Mm -hmm. Who's cleaning the bathrooms? I mean, come on. Well, gosh, the event got canceled. Oh, oh. yeah! And of course, it's my fault. Next to me. So then, NAMI, the uh, National Alliance for Mental Illness, was holding their fundraiser. Oh, mental illness. Mental not illness. only does Scientology not believe in mental illness, not only do they not let you get treated, they have a museum in Hollywood dedicated to eradicate the evils of psychiatry. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is scary. Yep. I went there once, I got some paperwork, and I left. And I was actually going to go there on the way here to get some paperwork to show you. I was too scared to go, because it is creepy there. Yeah. But, so again, I write to him and said, hey, I noticed you have a fundraiser. And I'd like to know, you know, that, that like to let you know that um, this is the Con Citizens Commission on Human Rights is a non-profit mental health watchdog. And I sent them a link to it, so I let them know. So they uh, canceled. Uh -huh. All right. <laughs> uh, next slide. <laughs> and then here's our, here's our uh, interaction. And then they had another one, and I said, I hope it was successful. I didn't attend. I support your organization. But at this point, I was not allowed to go to these events. 
Uh, but they said we're open to different venue. We want to honor our volunteers. They don't push on us. We just use the facility for free. Um, you know, and so forth and stuff. So they're kind of in this denial because well, we've got this great golf course, this great clubhouse, it's all free. You know, let's bury our heads in the sand. So, next slide. This one I love because I decided to go to a KP breakfast. Five dollars. Supports the Ramona Bowl. So I just gotta go post on Facebook. Hey, anybody want to go to the KP breakfast? You know, come on. So, nobody would go. <laughs> so I picked up my niece, who was about 12 years old, and we went there. I was not allowed out of my car. Because not only did they know because they monitored my Facebook that I was going, they know my car, and they have car reader um, license plate things along their street. So as soon as you enter the place by the street, they're alerted. I pulled in the parking lot and the security guard was standing there. Don't even get out of the car. Wow. So I rolled down my window and said, what's going on? And he was saying, I have a whole video. And he was saying, no, you're not allowed here. You're not welcome here. You're trespassing. I'm calling 911. I said, I'm here for pancakes. Come on. <laughs> no, I'm calling 911. And the funny thing, my sister loves this part of the video because he goes, I'm calling 911 right now. <laughs> Because they can't call 911 from there, they have to go through their system to get an outside line. So, so we're like, 911's three numbers, what are you doing? <laughs> uh, Calling the report of trespasser. So I was, I was going to kind of see a push it, but the little girl with me was a developmentally disabled and was getting a little stressed. So I said, okay, we won't push it, we'll leave. So I posted the video, and it was picked up by the Hammond News, and they posted it. And the remote will called them up and said, we want you to take that down because she was creating problems. And before the video that you posted, she was calling them names and passing out all this anti-literature and it's creating all these problems. And you don't have that part. And I love that. The guy says, he had a camera, show me his part. Show me where he recorded. Uh -huh. Did she do something before all this and we just show us? Of course it never happened, so. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> Next one. Here we go, we've got a fundraiser for a homeless shelter, $75. So I bought a ticket, $75. Well, unfortunately, I, so I got the ticket, and about two days before I got a call saying, come get your money back. Oh. And I said, why? They said, you're not allowed there. Why? Just come get your money back. So I got my money back, but I went anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and this is uh, Linda, no, this is Linda, the lady I met, and this is Muriel. These are two directors, and they are standing there blocking my car. It's my mom's car, so they're not going to see it first. <laughs> Sorry, hey, mom. hey, stop! He said, Eric, get out of here. You don't have your ticket. You got your money back. I said, did you give me the money back, or did they give me the back? Doesn't matter. Get out of here. I said, no, it does. Did you give me the money back, or did they? They gave you the money back. I said, well, then you're costing these charities money by choosing who goes. Doesn't matter. They chased me away again. Security got called. They called the Barty Five, by the way. Barty Five. Yeah, next slide. So here these things are still going on, and I keep writing to them and writing to them. And uh, here's one for cancer, and uh, of course they don't want you to um, know, you know, it doesn't have anything about Scientology John here, but they all want you to announce for the cancer victims, and all the models are going to be cancer survivors and all this. Next one. So here, the Alliance Club, oh, you know what I forgot to mention, I did, um, Whatever the plan is. Uh, I did write to the Kiwanis. The Kiwanis did one there, and I thought it was on here, but I didn't see it. Uh, and the Kiwanis Club said um, they were going to continue to have the meetings there, that they, I was wrong, that they had heard about me causing problems, they had heard about me doing this, that, and the other, and so um, they want to bury their heads in the sand because it's free. So here we have the Lions Club, and I bought a ticket, and of course he got refunded. <laughs> so here's my little refund. Here, here, here's your refund, is what Rob says. You can so I, you know, I wrote to them and said, hey, I don't support them, but they shouldn't be screening your fundraiser. That would be discrimination. So you can see they read it, but they didn't respond. Mm -hmm. So next slide. I went anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and this time I wrote my sister into going with me. She was finally brave enough to go. And we took a Mike Rinder bobblehead. Mike Rinder bobblehead. This is the bobblehead of Leah Remy's co-host. Mm -hmm. And so we took it with us. And we put it on the golf course. We took little pictures of the Mike Rinder. <laughs> We said that he wasn't, he was trying to sneak into the hole, but he got a hole in one. Um, but we had to sneak in and we were very good, like, you know, you walk around. But what we did was we found, um, we decided to take these little cards. And we placed these cards 
in places we thought workers would find them. In the bathroom, by the toilet brush, under the sink, by the soap refill, and then outside, like in a bucket or a trash can and stuff, because we thought workers are who we're looking at. We don't want to just leave them on the tables, you know. So we were kind of placing them around. And then we left. We took pictures the whole time. So when I posted the picture on the Facebook, people were like, oh my god, I would love to see the next day. Because once someone finds one of those, you know they're going to have these people crawling the whole thing, trying to find where all these cards are. <laughs> Wait a minute, we can't have the CEO members do it, because they'll find the cards. So we were all like, <laughs> So next slide. So here they keep going. So here we have the, um, here's the second annual they meet. Going to do it. Here's their weekly golf fundraiser to commute the benefit pantry. And then they were having another set Mount San Jacinto golf tournament. So they're still having all of these things here. And they're just in the paper and stuff. Um, I'm not on their list anymore. So, um, <laughs> so go ahead and change to the next one. So I, I, I look at this because here's the ticket. This is the money they're making. Here's their little dinner. You know, $20 for a ticket, $44 for two, sponsor for $1,000. I mean, these charities are making a lot of money. What they're considering, you know, for free because they don't have to pay for the facility. In fact, the food can even be provided by um, the uh, Scientology. They'll, they'll do that if you want them to. So um, I wrote about them and said, look, using a facility implies you're supporting them. Um, and that they do a lot of things. So I told them, I'm supporting your organization. I'm still writing, but um, I, I'm not, you know, supporting. Anyway, they said they're not going to die. All the money goes to our charity. You know, like it's not the money that they're after. It's the handshaking that they want. They want, you know, to be able to say on their things, oh, we support 3,000 charity. We raise seven million dollars for our, our locals and stuff. And then they take that to their big wigs and show them what wonderful things Scientology is doing. Next slide. <coughs> this is the local police. Oh Lord. Here we go, it's Captain Purvis. Here they are at the mixer. That's what I was at. And then here we go, Captain Purvis. Wait a minute. Glenn Brock, this is the police officer, the only thing better than a day on the golf course, it's a day on the golf course, benefit the charity. He goes every month because that's what he's doing. And I'm going, gee, you don't think that they're doing this to try to create a partnership with them so that, you know, one hand shakes the other, and if there's any problems, like Aaron Plum's trying to get into a bed, this guy's going to shake it up. Possibly. All right, next one. The other thing I started being aware of, so now I'm sending letters to the charities, but then I see that they have um, a, a city meeting where they're going to try to close the road. There's a road that kind of goes right through the middle of the, um, the compound. And David Miscavige wanted it closed, and they had tried for years to get it closed, and it wasn't closed. But there was another time where a city councilman had decided to put it on their, their uh, thing to have it closed. And so I went to the meeting, and a couple other people went as well, and we spoke about it. And so the city decided unanimously that they were going to keep it open. In fact, one of them said we should widen it. <laughs> <laughs> but wait a minute, change that. Next slide. But then I started to notice this changing happening down here at this thing. And I don't have a picture of it, but they suddenly started building these big cement posts along. And they didn't have cameras on them, they didn't have gates on them, they didn't, I was like, what are these posts going down the road? Well, they, they're trying to fight the widening of the road. Mm -hmm. So it's still going to happen, but it's going to be delayed because anyone could do, you know, coming in and doing the contract for the widening of the road now has these huge posts to take down and do it. So the other thing that happened was someone said, hey, can you go down there? There's this road um, on the Scientology. It's kind of on the property, but it's a public road. Now, if you happen to see my Scientology movie that yeah. Laro, uh, Louis Thero did, it's a weird movie. But at one part of the movie, he goes and parks on this public road. Well, the Scientologist, um, I can't think of her name right now, um, Catherine Frazier, goes down and gets in his face. This road is closed. He says, well, I have a permit. It's a public road. She says, can you not see the sign? It says, road closed. He says, I have a permit. It's a public road. The road is closed. How stupid are you? See, road. I mean, she just gets into it. Like, the very end of the movie, the last words say, it was a public road. <laughs> so these guys say to me, we want to go park on that public road. I go down there, and they have torn down all the houses on the road. So I call the county, and I said, hey, what happened? And they said, well, when there's no longer houses, and they no longer need a road, the road has disappeared. Mm -hmm. So in order to get rid of their public road, they bought all the houses and tore down the houses. So there's no longer the public road. 
Mm. Then, uh, the also thing that happened was um, Leah Remnies talked a lot about the, um, the razor wire. These big fences with razor wire going both ways. So they took down the razor wire, but they planted hundreds of cactus. <laughs> I mean, just hundreds of cactus all along there. So you can see the buildings back, but you can't get to them because of the cactus. <laughs> Next one. So these are a couple of the books that I just, I, and I brought a couple if you want to see, but we don't have a lot of time. These are the two books I think that are just like the most amazing books. This was by Tori Ortega. But a woman back in the 70s was investigated and wrote an article about them, and then got so much information she made it into a book. Had nothing to sign, you know, she didn't have anything to sign, she just, newspaper article, came into a book, wrote a book, boom. They did such a campaign against her, hiring public um, PIs, people who follow her, harassment. They set her up for criminal cases, everything. She almost killed herself. And she almost went to jail because they had somebody sneak into her house and get her stationery. They got her fingerprints on it, wrote a bomb threat, and then the next thing you know. Anyway, fascinating story of the extreme lengths that Scientology goes. I mean, it's extreme and scary. Mm -hmm. The other one is blown for good. This one is. Um, uh, I can't even explain this one. Um, a guy that just kind of falls into Scientology because there's no place else to go as he's growing up and stuff, and then he gets sucked into it. Not that he believes it, but he can't leave. He finally escapes on a motorcycle, gets run off the road, um, and then he has to try to fight to get his wife out. And she has to sneak out through the back of a Walmart. And, I mean, it's just scary what they had to do to escape and get out. Now, the great thing is this couple that escaped, 12 years now, they sent me a Christmas card Aww. with their three children. After two forced abortions, they left Scientology and now have a beautiful family that they would never have had. Mm -hmm. So another fascinating book. But, um, but the other thing is just, what are the lengths that they will do in order to kind of, you know, shut people up? So I will say that, um, going back to the Mormon church thing, after I went there, apparently I made that comment to the lady saying, oh, I am the equals. Anyway, she called the state president of the Mormon church, who then called me and said, hey, I hear you've been bothering Scientology. <laughs> and I'm like, who are you, my dad? I mean, what is that? You know? And so then I got really pissed. And I said, you didn't call me when I lost a child. You didn't call me when I went through a horrible divorce. But you're going to call me because I went to a Scientology event? Never mind. Go into me. I, I, I resigned. I went into his office, resigned. So I was never see again. But I know that they were following up on me and checking. Another side note is I lost my job last year. Um, I was a teacher. I was in a new district. You go contract year to year for the first couple of years. My reviews were exemplary. I had just met with my principal. Meets her at seeds across the board. Aaron, we love you. You're doing great. A week later, HR calls me and says, we're not renewing your contract. Why? Well, that's a good reason. You're probation. How hard would it have been for Scientology to have 10, 50 people call the district and just say, you know, hey, what about that one? I don't know, but I suspect. And, and so I moved up here. Um, my Facebook does not have my job, <laughs> so that was a change I made. But I do know I'm followed, and I do know that they, they kind of keep track. So next slide. This is a book about human trafficking by the U.S. Church of Scientology. Um, it refers to the Russian and how they would go to Russia and get people into their Sea Org and then promise them coming to California and it's going to be wonderful and then they get trapped here and they take away their passports and all this stuff. 20 years ago, it's known, it's happening, it's there. Is anything being done? No. Has it been 20 years? Yes. I mean, in this book, the FBI, the reason they know about what happened here was the FBI invaded them and found that all of this documentation of them undercover and the, the um, IRS and the CIA and all of this stuff um, they arrested um, uh, LRH's uh, Ron, uh, wife. Mary Sue. Yeah, Mary Sue. They, they arrested his wife. She became a fall guy. She went to jail for it. And they continued. Scientology continued. So it's kind of creepy. Next page. This is a street down in um, uh, Clearwater, Florida. And if you look, all of these little buildings, these are all front groups. This whole block, actually almost the whole city, but this whole block is all Scientology front groups. And it says the Church of Scientology uses front groups, this is Wikipedia, to promote its interests in politics and makes itself appear le uh, legitimate. Next page. This is a list of the front groups that I can find. Um, uh, and there's, there's a whole bunch of them. The one I'm going to point out to you is one called the New Cult Awareness Network. 
There was a cult awareness network where you could call and get information about cults. There was a lawsuit, something weird happened, and it became bankrupt. Scientology bought it, bought the name. So if you call the cult awareness network for information about cults, you get Scientology. <laughs> Sneaky, huh? Then there's another one called Narconon, which is a drug rehab. Hey, let's build a drug rehab. You and I can build a drug rehab. Have these people come in there. We're going to put them in a sauna, tell them they're going to sweat out the drugs. We're going to teach them how to do Scientology. And if they die, well, they were drug addicts. And who's going to know anything? That's exactly what they're doing. And, and people are dying mm -hmm. at these narcobones. And, and it, anyway, so here I write to other real doctors and trained therapists. They said, yes. Are you Scientology? No, 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 no. We just use their, their stuff. Next slide. Um, then I went to a seminar and it says successfully raising children using LRH principles. So I went there. I use my own name. I do not hide who I am. I use my own name. So I got in, and then after a while, they're like, wait a minute, you're that plum girl. That's what I call it. You're that Aaron Plum girl. Get out of here. Um, but I went and said, why are you using 30 year old theories when we know the brain continues to grow way into its 20s? Why would you? What do you, mean, what do you mean 30 year old? I said, well, guy's been dead for 30 years. So if you're raising children based on its principles, you're using these old things. They said, uh, we don't think you understand what's going on here. You need to leave. So I was invited to leave. I didn't even get the lunch. All right, next one. So this is my, this is the end. This is me and my sister, and we were actually in Dublin, Ireland. Now in Ireland, currently, as in like, there's a judgment coming up. They just had a hearing. So they, um, Scientology bought a school, and they said they were turning it into a nursing home. Wow, wouldn't you love a nursing home in your community? Help the elderly, help your family, things. I mean, doesn't that sound wonderful? They're going to build a nursing home. Well, right before it opened, and I happened to be there. This happened actually last year. And, and there was this poster, because they had to post a thing saying something about a change, and all of a sudden it said Scientology on it. So I took a picture of it, and I posted it, and it went to the city, and all of a sudden the city said, wait a minute, Scientology, wait a minute, Narcanon, you're, wait, you're going to build a drug rehab? Oh, yeah, it's going to be a drug rehab. Well, you got a permit for a nursing home. That's a totally different thing. No, no, no. So they're fighting the city now because the city's saying, you got permission to do this. This is a totally different thing. So they actually were in Dublin last month in December um, saying, you know, they're, they're fighting for it. They won't, they won't know until um, uh, February what the verdict is. And even then, if they get to know, what's it mean? They're going to turn it into a nursing home. They're going to get permission. You know, it's kind of vague. It's happening. But they're fighting it there, and Scientology is just really sneaky. They're not even classified as a religion there. They're in several countries. Uh, Germany, Australia, and a couple other countries, they have gotten out of the religious thing. But one of the things that holds them back here is, is uh, that. So next slide. So one person makes a difference. I'm, I'm really not doing a lot. I'm scared to stiff every time I do these things. But I go. So despite being a mandated reporter, I told you I'm a teacher. I also feel that if a person is made aware of abuse, they are obligated to do what they can to stop it. Um, if there were still children at the camp there, I would be down there stopping them, but that got stopped. Um, there are other abuses there, and I was trying to let uh, the community and things know about it. Um, I see every time I do something there, it sounds like it's real easy. Drive by there, take a little bobblehead, take some pictures. And I think about, oh, I'll go, I'll go, I'll go. But I really, it's really scary. And I know they're retaliating, and I know they have. Not so much. I mean, I'm kind of a fly in the, in the ointment, but, um, but they are getting a little more aware, so, um, so I have to move. But anyway, that's, that's the end of uh, my one person making a difference in my little bit of activism, and uh, thank you very much for letting me speak. Oh. Thank you. We got time for a couple questions? Oh. Anybody have any questions? I can hear you.